Right, hello everybody. We are at that point of the season where we're starting to look enviously at other clubs because they're making signings and we're not. And it is difficult, obviously. I think Portsmouth have made six signings so far this season. And we always have the understanding that we take our time, we do business sensibly, but it's still difficult. So I thought in this time I would take a look at five genuinely realistic transfers that we could make. So no Phil Jones. No Danny Drinkwater, no Ross Barclays. So I think we have actually a very strong free market this year to play in. As far as I'm aware now, we're also prepared to, not necessarily we will, but prepared to make bids if necessary. I remember we reportedly made a bid of 300000 for Hammer from Burton back in last summer. And there's another player that I believe we've made bids for prior to this summer. However, it's not something that I think we should expect, nor something that we should really anticipate. But there are players that are potentially more reasonable this year than in previous years of a higher quality that we could try and sign. But the first player I'm going to recommend is a very simple free transfer. In fact, for this list's our free transfers. At the end of the day, we are a club that do very successful on the transfer market, on the free agent market. And it is Lloyd Jones from Cambridge. He is one that there's been a lot of rumours about, a lot of stuff on Twitter and various other social outlets about Lloyd Jones joining Wickham. The 6-2 centre-back had a very good season with Cambridge as they fought relegation. He played 36 games and scored four goals. And he made 70% of his passes an average of 26.8 passes per game, which is much better than our other centre-backs, Ryan Tafazzoli and Chris Frino-Joseph, who both have less passes and less passes accurately on average. Now, he won't be as good as, say, Alfie Morrison, but Alfie Morrison was a Rolls-Royce sort of player. And it does seem like Matt Bloomfield wants to play a bit more passing, so he would be a good shout. But he's not just a good defensive player. Or a good passing player. He's actually an excellent defensive player. He makes 1.1 interceptions per game and he wins 65% of his total duels, 58% on the ground and a massive 69% of his aerial duels. Centre-back is somewhere that we could look at and with that player being based locally since 2012, he could be tempted to a move to Wickham, a club that you would hope after strengthening could challenge for promotion again. And the second player is another of Cambridge. It is Sam Smith, not that Sam Smith, the striker. He has been rumoured to join Wickham, and it was reported recently that while Portsmouth were interested in him, they have dropped out of interest in him, meaning there would be less competition for us to sign him. And I think this would be great news for us this signing. Sam, age, Sam Vokes is ageing a little bit, and you saw last season he did have injuries. And Brandon Hanlon, I like Brandon, but I don't think he's a number nine. I think he'd be much better playing as a winger or playing as a sh like a playing behind a main striker, running in behind, playing as a centre attacking mid, perhaps in the same role TJ Debar has occupied. He had a good season at Cambridge. He scored thirteen goals and made two assists to help them stay in the league. And 12 of those goals came from open play. And don't forget, I believe those numbers, 13 goals, would make him our top goal scorer if he was with a club last season. He's perhaps more of a classic sort of poacher. He got most of his goals inside the box. But we could use this. He could give somebody for dynamic players like TJ DeBar and Gareth McCleary, somebody both to pass off and make moves off, but also somebody in the box. You can play balls over the top, you can play through balls, but also you can play balls from the corners. That is something I think we struggle with with Brandon Hanlon. He's not the classic striker who will pick up little bits and pieces in the box. Um, and that is something that we can look to. And especially with Sam Vokes, as I said, aging, bringing in Sam Smith would offer us a clear transitional path to a younger striker 25 years old, but has proven himself at League One level, and if we are successful enough, I believe would be capable of stepping up to the championship level, if given time, and given the right sort of opportunities in the box, which I do believe we could give him. 
Our third one is Ethan Chislett from AFC Wimbledon. This one has been named by both Football Insider and Football League World as a player on Wickham's radar. The centre midfielder had a good season in League One with struggling Wimbledon, scoring nine goals and getting three assists in 44 games, of which he started 42. Suggesting not only is he capable of getting goal contributions, but playing regularly, which I know players love. We love Dominic Gape, we loved Curtis Thompson, Freeman, but... They were unavailable for large portions of time. Chislett coming in centre mid, but being capable of playing the vast majority of games would be an improvement in and of itself. We will get about 0 0.31 goals or assists per 90 minutes, which is pretty good. And he looks like perhaps not a like for like placement, but at 23, somebody who could grow into replacing Lewis Wing. Occupy a similar role to him, trying to link play, trying to get goals. He is also more than capable of passing. He makes 72% of his passes quite accurately. So that's really good to have. He is also more than capable of set pieces. With Jordan Abito and Lewis Wing leaving on free transfers and Joe Jacobson likely to be hopefully a fringe player, having somebody like Ethan Chislett capable with a ball of its feet, three goals and 12, three goals from 12 free kicks is a pretty good return rate. At 23, he is one that could step up over time and could improve with a step up to a new division. And centre midfield is absolutely a position we need to look at. So bringing in a young free transfer, room to improve, who's already pretty good, I think that's a no-brainer for me personally. Kane Vincent Young from Ipswich. He's one that I haven't seen too much about. And he was released from Ipswich at the end of this season. He made 64 appearances from them after joining from Colchester for about 700k. He was rated very highly at Colchester. Joined them, he did suffer some, some injuries, but it seemed to have done better these past two seasons. In one way, he would suit Wickham's philosophy perfectly. He is a good egg. He took part in a campaign during COVID to help speak to elderly um, people who had been isolated and been told to isolate by the government. And he was actually very, very vocal in talking to fans at Ipswich. He was named their community champion for the 2021 season. So he is the sort of player that would reinforce a very good team atmosphere we're trying to build here. On the pitch, he is a versatile player, capable of playing both the left and the right fullback positions. And I'm going to use stats for the 2021 season rather than the 22-23 season, because last season he was absolutely overshadowed by the exceptional Leaf Davis. In just 15 games in that season, between injuries, he created four assists in 15 games, making 22.7 accurate passes per game. With a 76% success rate, that is very, very good passing. His defensive stats are poor, not terrible, but he does seem to be much more of an attacking fullback, and an attacking fullback who is capable of playing both sides. On the right, he would be able to play, I believe he'd be a better attacking fullback than, say, Jason McCarthy. He would also allow Jack Grimmer to potentially play as a centre-back, which I believe is Jack Grimmer's best role now. And he would offer a different choice and perhaps a starter over Joe Jacobson, who, as I said, shouldn't be starting every game. He reminds me now a bit of Matt Bloomfield or uh, even Gareth Ainsworth back in the day or Edward Akinfenwa, who were brilliant leaders. Absolutely, they need to be kept for the team but they shouldn't be starting. Coming up, coming in the 20th minute for to help the team out, to provide some leadership, absolutely. But not starting every game. And he would, I think he would do well on both sides. That Ipswich team, even their fringe players, were very, very, very good this season. Um, and I think their plan is probably just to buy somebody much better in the championship this season. So I think he's somebody that League One clubs, and especially Wickham, should look to pick up. Ipswich squad last season was absurdly strong. And I think he'd do a good shout. And the last player is actually one that you we would have to pay a fee for. Um, this is the only player on the list I've included, but I've included it because there is some genuine evidence and not just Twitter accounts with 22 followers claiming to be sources. The 72 reported in June that Wickham had already had bids rejected in the last year for Ali Koi Koi from Northampton Town. He is 23 years old and is a left back, so with Jordan Abita going and JJ 
I'm not going to beat the dead horse. He is position, that is position we need to look at. He played 22 games as Northampton managed to gain promotion to League One and actually seemed to be a very good all-around fallback. He made one assist, which is the same as Jordan Obita, but made 1.3 interceptions, 1.7 tackles and 1 clearances on average per game. He also wins just under half of his defensive duels, winning 49% of his duels. Compare this to Jordan Obita, who made 50% of his duels, but he made more. Koi Koi made 4.5 duels per game compared to 2.6 of Jordan Obita. So defensively, you're looking at somebody who is better than Obita. But he also made more accurate passes than Obita. He made 18.9 passes per game at a success rate of 65% compared to Obita, who we considered a very good attacking fullback who made just 13 passes at a rate of 61% per game. So he could be the real deal. At 23, he's somebody who's not even at his prime yet. He was linked to Sunderland as well this season. He's linked to Portsmouth. He's been linked to Bolton. I think a good few clubs. And instead of 23, coming into his prime, he is somebody that if we bring in on a two or three year deal, could form the backbone of a squad that really challenges for the championship. Or which is the model we're going to have to look at getting now as a player that we can bring in for a low fee and sell onwards to the championship or one of the big, big league one clubs to have more far more money than us for a profit would be the sort of case of, yes, it would cost us a little bit of money now, but in the long term, I do think that he definitely has the ability now, but also the potential to be a very, very good player and somebody we could sell on for a bit of pocket change. So that's just five players I wanted to highlight. I did ask some of you on Twitter who you thought. Um, some of these players I also had in mind myself. If there's any players that you think I've missed out on, if there's any players that I've mentioned that perhaps you think, no, I don't think we should go for them, or actually, yes, I think we this player would be brilliant, please do let me know. I'm happy to keep looking at players because we have nothing else to do. In the meantime, we're waiting for the club to come good. The club will come good. But it's just difficult between now. So, Wickham fans, anybody else who's watching, I hope you have a brilliant day.